The program is designed as a pair model, and so when we're talking to people about the program, we're asking about the person who has a diagnosis of dementia, and we're asking about the care partner. Now, we loosely define the definition of a care partner. It's anybody, a friend or a family, that feels like they're connected to the journey. But the care partner isn't coming as an observer. They're not coming to protect the person coming or to help us. They are there to actively participate so that it really is about the individual having his or her own experience and about the relationship. Something about when a horse appears on the scene that happens magically. And whether or not you are a person living with dementia who's now got a, a noisy brain where signals are not moving through the way you're used to, or you're a care partner who's now focused on that person because they're not acting the way they used to, that all drops away. The minute they get around a horse, suddenly everyone is on an equal footing. That gets everyone so calm and so soothed that the brain, the noisy brain of the person with dementia, starts to work a little better and the over-anxious caregiving of the care partner starts to ease, and they begin to experience their own reactions and where they are in this journey. Horses bring a whole different level of interaction to a relationship because they are um, going to read what's going on with the person that they're interacting with, and they're gonna to respond to that as they would in nature. The other beautiful thing about a horse is it's a 1,200 pound animal. When it walks up to somebody and you're standing next to it, it evokes a whole different sense of confidence, of self-awareness, of being out in nature and being next to this large animal. And there's a physicality that's involved. And when we do these workshops with families, we see often an improvement in physicality over the course of the treatment because the um, participants want to be up and next to this animal. They feel that welcome and they want to be more physical and it's amazing to watch that transformation. It is not a typical setting for them and so you watch people get out of their car, walk up to the barn and look around and, and things are so new and so you have trees, you have smells, you have you have the horses, you have all of these things that are sparking your sensory memory. And that's a really important part of the program is to get out of your cognitive tasks of the day and get into your senses. First thing we want to do is help them arrive. So what we do is we just start out with the usual thing. Who's here? What does horse mean to you? We just sit in a circle and talk. Very often in that circle, uh, we can see who is most affected by dementia, especially in terms of speaking. That also gives us a baseline from which to watch the changes occur, because people invariably talk more at the end of a program, uh, certainly at the end of several weeks, but also just at the beginning of that first day. So the first thing we do is that. The next thing we do is we ask people to stand up, close their eyes, and breathe. And we teach them how to center themselves physically by taking three deep breaths and focusing on their center of gravity, the spot just below their belly button. This makes the energy go like that. It's just a physiological reality that it shifts the energy. Then we have them just do some gentle stretches for their shoulders just to kind of say, oh yeah, I'm a little tight. Let me arrive in my body more. The next thing we do is a sensory walk. And that is a no talking walk around the property where they can look at the horses, they can look at the trees, they can hear the birds like we can hear right now. And which it's a beautiful thing to just widen your vision and take in where you are in nature. They can see whole horses, which is an amazing thing to see an entire large animal like that. Um, then we talk about that. We talk about what people saw, again, anchoring them to their senses. The next thing we do is, again, it's another kind of an assessment. We do over the fence, so the horse is in a stall or paddock, and they can look at the horse, they can touch the horse if the horse permits it. So it's just a gentle introduction to the horse, and it's also part of our assessment. Um, what's their impulse control like? Uh, are they, do they have safety awareness? So then we can calibrate what we do going forward. The next activity is typically grooming. So we go up to a paddock, it's a bigger area, 
Uh, there's a horse handler holding the horse, and the person with dementia touches the brushes, tries them on themselves, sometimes on each other, and then they start brushing the horse. Often will start with their hand on the horse. So there's nothing between them, and ask them to feel, pay attention, go as slowly as they need to, to feel the horse. And then we talk about what they felt, and we hear things like, oh, they're so strong. The muscles are just amazing, or they're so soft, which is just interesting right there. <laughs> soft and strong. So the idea of paired opposites, think two things that are opposite that are true at the same time, starts to come into our vocabulary for the day. Typically when we get to brushes, we can add in the awareness of your actions on the horse. Sometimes people will be too hard, they'll be too soft, the horse gets fussed, the horse shows that it doesn't like it. We want our horses to speak, we want them to communicate so that particularly care partners can see that maybe if they're overdoing it with the horse, a lighter touch might be better. That translates without us doing anything to them understanding that maybe they might be overdoing it with their, their partner as well, or family member. Just being in the presence of a horse. That's the kind of thing we see over and over. Just being in the presence of a horse. When a care partner watches the person living with dementia, their loved one, interacting with a horse, the horse is accepting them, the horse is responding to them, the horse is being affectionate and nurturing with them. There's no label. There's no judgment. I think what's, what's really most unique about the horse in this aspect is that they are an incredible social mirror. They're just going to reflect back whatever it is that the person next to them is putting out there. And if we have a caregiver that walks in and they want to be in control of the situation and they want to have that kind of control that they have at home or that they feel like they have to have at home, the horse is going to stand there and it's going to say, that's not how I do this. You have a, a dementia a participant that is in the moment, that's interacting, and they are following the cues of the horse and they reach down for that same foot. They're putting out a different message. That horse is going to comply with that request. And we see this happen right in front of us. And it's an amazing step forward for these families in working the problem, in thinking about how they're communicating. And the horse teaches that more than any other species. When people come to, to the workshops, they're often coming with their own expectations and they come in with their own roles. And those roles just dissipate. And very quickly people just become who they are in the moment. And there's this recognition that their relationship can come back together, that that doesn't have to end because we've had this diagnosis. If you wanted a place to come or an activity to do where you're totally taken care of, where you can let go of all of the day-to-day -day stuff that goes on in your life. This is one of the best experiences Rich and I have had. Participants tell us that they feel alive again, that they feel empowered to do things, and that they are going to live and activating people right after they're diagnosed is the most important thing. It's that they don't go into depression. So we see a difference in their depression, in their affect, their language. We see a difference in the way people, their fluency of words after being in the program. And they tell us how much better they feel. It's not a struggle to get them to come out to the barn. They get up, they're ready. It's not like going to the doctor. It's something really positive that they want to come out and be with that horse, a horse that makes them feel whole again. I affectionately call it a support group on steroids because the progress that's made in such a short time is due to the horse that teaches them that they don't care what their diagnosis is, what their label is, that they're just a whole human being. And the, the trust of the group is just tremendous. So our dream is to have this in every community. So once you get the diagnosis, perhaps the doctor will write the prescription to go out and spend time with the horse. Perhaps the insurance will pay for that at some point so that people will have, instead of a, a pharmaceutical pill, 
they'll have a meaningful experience that gives them more life in their years. So we may not find the magic pill, I've been waiting for 25 years for it, but we may find other alternative ways to help people on this journey.